Well, it's been quite a while since we've done a movie review here at Don't Talk TV, and I thought it was high time that I reviewed the 1997 film Gattaca, especially since it was requested by a reviewer, I think on my very first movie review a couple years ago. So I've been meaning to get to it, and uh, trust me, I wasn't ignoring the request. I've just been trying to get around to finding a chance to watch it. Finally did, so we're going to review that today. Hello, my name is Nicholas Wands, but I'm a lawyer in Stratford, Ontario, Canada, and welcome to Don't Talk TV. So today we're going to talk about the film Gattaca. It's a 1997 dystopian film starring uh, Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman, uh, also has Jude Law playing in a supporting role. It's actually available for free on CTV, of all places. I'll put the link in the show description. It says that it's uh, free with advertisements, although I didn't see any advertisements when I was watching it. That was the main reason why it's taken me so long to watch this film, is just trying to find the time to get a hold of a copy and watch it. Had some time recently, saw that it was free streaming, so I decided to watch it. And, I mean, it's another one of those excellent dystopian films that has a lot of really relevant themes today. In terms of a film, it's not bad. I wouldn't put it as one of the top classics of all time, or one of my favorites. I found the acting very subdued. Now, that was likely on purpose because it's a dystopian society. Uh, however, it didn't have a specific element focused on why things were subdued, like as a result of drugs or some such. I'm thinking of uh, films like Equilibrium, which is another film I should cover sometime, in that people are given drugs so they don't have emotions, and that's why everyone's so subdued. I mean, that's a very horrific future. Gattaca is a pretty troubling one as well. So the main theme of this film, without giving away spoilers to the best of my ability, it's a society depicted that is really run on eugenics. They're constantly testing people's DNA. People's futures are really determined. What careers they can get are determined to a large extent by what their genetics are. And then you have a whole group of uh, unregistered in individuals that are called invalids. They're like a new underclass. They're described as a new and detested member of society, the people who are willing to deal the hand they've been dealt. So there's a lot of interesting things. Now, right very early in the film, I, I found it a bit refreshing and interesting that the film actually addresses the mass murder that is inherent in in vitro fertilization. Uh, the main character, his parents, he's born naturally. I mean, that's not a spoiler. That's revealed right at the beginning of the film. Uh, but he has a, then his parents went back and uh, got a brother made up for him using the accepted style with this eugenics. They have four viable uh, fetuses that are developed as a result of this, and then the parents decide which one they're going to keep and which three will be terminated. Now, I mean, that is already here. That's not even science fiction. That, maybe not to that level where people are actually picking, do we want this one or that one? But absolutely, it's inherent in vitro, in vitro fertilization that there will be many uh, children who will be killed, who will die, uh, so that the one can be implanted and survive. Uh, I think it's something that shouldn't be legal. I, I think it's very disturbing practice, another medical ethics thing. But I mean, these are building blocks that I think led us to COVID, where when medical doctors are doing things like this, and this is considered ethical and good medicine, that it allows for uh, other things, other troubling things that we see and the dehumanization that we saw of people who didn't receive COVID vaccinations. And just the concept of, you know, I read a story just the other day of a lady who died horrifically from cancer because no doctor was willing to see her because of COVID. But I digress, getting back to Gattaca, that was a very interesting theme. But then the whole you know, discrimination of people based on their genetics is quite interesting. And what I really liked is that early in the film, the main character played by Ethan Hawke references the fact that genoism, uh, discrimination against people based on their genetics, is officially illegal, but in practice no one cares. That law is completely ignored. I think we've seen examples of that in, uh, in current society, where in theory discrimination on certain grounds is not allowed. Well, in theory, medical coercion is not allowed. 
yet that was clearly ignored. Same, I mean, discrimination. There's a lot of discrimination that is totally allowed that goes on. You're not, according to the human rights codes, you're not allowed to discriminate against people on the basis of their skin color or their ethnicity. But this clearly goes on all the time, as long as it's European heritage people who are being discriminated against. You see it very frequently in job ads where they say that this is a, a job at vacancy that, or we're focusing on diversity. So females, people of color and disabled people will be given priority. I mean, by giving any group priority, you're obviously discriminating against another group. It, I mean, think about it, just spin that around. What if someone said white males will be prioritized? I mean, we all know exactly what would happen there. It should apply both ways, but the law doesn't apply equally. I'm, but it, it should be the same. But again, this was an interesting theme that I saw in the film that I thought you know, really touched on things that we see in society today. Then there's an invest a police investigation that goes on in part of the film, and they're trying to locate an invalid. They're they're rounding them up in the streets, doing random testing. They're stopping cars, doing random DNA testing, and that's another thing that we're very close to that. And I, it just made me think of the DNA samples that are taken after people are convicted in criminal law courts. I mean, those are taken as a matter of routine now, and it's considered by our courts to be analogous to taking fingerprints. So with that precedent set, I really don't see why they couldn't just take DNA samples from people on the street. And maybe we will see that coming one day, given all the jurisprudence that's developed about how this is not actually a serious violation of one's privacy. And again, that's why it's become just a matter of routine for these things to be ordered. So those are three key points that I found really interesting in this film. I, I think it's worth watching. It's not part of my personal collection because it's not one of my personal favorites. I'm not saying it's bad. I just don't think it's as great as some of the other films that I've reviewed and I've expressed how much I love those films. I don't hate this film. I think it's definitely worth watching. So uh, I, I would recommend if you haven't seen it, it's, it's worth checking out. Definitely some very interesting themes in it. Uh, this video, of course, is not legal advice. If you need legal advice, call a lawyer. You can feel free to call another lawyer or call myself. My contact information is listed below. Uh, and we are uh, happy to take your suggestions. This show is based on a suggestion, albeit one that it's taken a while for me to get to. But we do take them seriously and try to work them into the schedule best we can. So please keep those coming. You can send them to the email address listed below or leave in the comments box. And if you found this video at all interesting, helpful, or informative, please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, and following us on social media.